anything? Um, Some said this is going to be good, and it is. <laughs> it is going to be. I mean, I was frantically, you know, making my cord. Yeah, okay for you all. So now that I've done that, I, it's going to be good. So when um, you said you were making your cords okay for everyone, were you twisting them up so we could all talk no, about it? Or were you no, untwisting? No, I was untwisting. And I was thinking, I was like, gosh, I have to have Jennifer like task me to undo these. <laughs> That's how much like franticness it costs. <laughs> So Jennifer is down below. She is um, incredible. Make sure all the things mm -hmm. are happening. And so she's down below. So it's like we can see her. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, all right. So are you I'm set up for? I feel, yeah, I am set up for Instagram. Okay. But I feel like I'm going to share what I'm drinking too. Are you drinking anything? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, should we do it on Instagram as well? Yeah. Yeah. We'll do it on Instagram. I feel like mm -hmm. I've stumbled upon something so brilliant. Oh, well done. <laughs> Stay it's tuned. Everybody's on the edge of their seats now. It's going to have to live up to the hype. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go live. I think this is going to work. Start. Hello, Instagram. We are back for not bosses and breakfast. We have changed it to bosses and the blend um, because we are going to be talking about all things business, life, the blend of it all. Um, so say hello as you're joining. Mina's going to join me as well. We've got our friends over on Facebook joining us as well. Hi, Facebook. And if you're new here, especially on Facebook, um, let us know in the comments that you're new. This is your first time being a part of the show. Um, and if you, you know, are a longtime listener, Long-time First-time caller? I think caller? it's a first-time caller. It is, yeah. but they're not calling uh -huh. in. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of. I mean. All right. Say hello, oh Instagram. Hey. Okay. There we go. Ooh. Margie. I was like, I did not prepare. Okay. Ooh, we, we got go. lots of new. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Here's my friend Mina, a.k.a. co-founder, a.k.a. life partner, faux life. Mm -hmm. For life. Okay. Ooh, tech, it, the tech stars are aligning for us this morning, I feel like. <laughs> Never speak of a sleeping baby. <laughs> Don't make eye contact with that baby that falls down. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's get to what we were going to talk about. So this is Bosses of Blend, but Mina, tell me about your coffee. because, And also, yeah. if you're joining, let us know what you're drinking. We love to chat all things we're beverage. Yeah, where you're, or where you're um, tuning in from and also what you're drinking. We usually share this on Bosses on Breakfast, but I came up with this brilliant thing that I've started drinking, okay? So I normally, like once the kids start school, I start drinking bone broth again to get like, my, my gut health going. So uh -huh. I am drinking bone broth, but I've added a one of these tea bags that's turmeric and ginger. So you can buy <laughs> turmeric and ginger tea bags. And then I added a dash of black pepper and then like a crank of Himalayan uh, pink um, salt. Jeez. So pink Himalayan salt, and it tastes divine. So if anybody is into drinking bone broth, like go out and get yourself some tea bags that are turmeric and ginger. Make make sure you add black pepper because I learned that from Sarah of, um, gosh, what's her business name that's in our mastermind, that you need black pepper with turmeric. And um and it tastes amazing. So that's what I'm drinking. And not to worry, because I know you guys are worried about my coffee intake. Um, I do have <laughs> coffee with oat milk. <laughs> so what are you They're drinking? They're worried about there? it. Oh my gosh, you're so funny. Um, I am drinking, hold on, let me find you again. I lost you. Okay. So I'm drinking um, coffee in, who knows what this is from? Uh, it's from me. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that's from me. <laughs> But the actual sitcom, yes. What TV show? Ready, set, go. Um, so it's just coffee. Actually, instant coffee this morning and mm. um, and uh, oat milk with flaxseed. I was trying flaxseed. So um, I actually do like instant coffee. Like, it's oh, pretty yeah. delicious. Have the, you like, been trying one. the instant coffee? So what you do is you take instant coffee, put the tiny bis, tiniest bit of water in it and you froth it in your milk frother, but it's instant coffee and it makes it like a floofy coffee. And then you pour your creamer in there. Interesting. Next yeah. time. Okay. Nobody has guessed where my mug, what TV show my mug is from. <laughs> Nobody knows. Disappointed. I'm disappointed in this community. <laughs> 
<laughs> the office anyone michael scott anybody Every, everybody knows they just didn't type quickly enough <laughs> okay plus so we get you. a delayed thing yeah um, uh, okay now uh, they're saying it obviously yes. exactly. thank you Come Melissa. On. Mm-hmm. i feel like we missed the question silly <laughs> All right. So um, welcome. Yes, The Office, Michael Scott. And I'll just do the giveaway right here. Oh, the answer was on the back side. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. So who has – no worries, friends. We, we'll, still, we'll still keep you. Um, all right. So Bosses and Blood, Mina. We were called bo- Bosses and Breakfast when we last did this. We took a little bit of time off from the show. Um, let's talk about Bosses and the Blend and perhaps why the name has changed right now. Yeah. So bosses in the blend, we were trying to come up with a lot of different things. We honestly were going to keep it bosses and breakfast because we thought it's breakfast somewhere, kind of like that. It's five o'clock somewhere, you know, but we were thinking about like the words that are really core to the product boss. And one of the things that we always talk about is blending life with business because both of us have two kids apiece. Both of us are, we're, we don't live by each other. So Jacqueline now is Instead of New Jersey, she's in um, Los Angeles. So she's moved back to Los Angeles. Woo woo, raised so. the Valley Girl roof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so she's, you know, we're never together. So we've always talked about the blend of making it happen because, you know, when we would, when we were, I guess, coming up in this world of podcasting and all the things, people would talk about like, how do you balance it all? How do you juggle it all? How do you do all these things? And those two things seem, to have to have perfection. So for example, if you balance something, it has to feel perfect. If you're juggling something, you better be perfect or you're not juggling. It's like balls falling on the ground. And so Jacqueline and I have always called it a blend. And you'll hear that throughout all of our episodes where we're like, you know, incorporate your kids into your business and also incorporate help into your life. You know, so support is like 360 versus, you know, over here or over there sort of feeling. And so that's where we landed on bosses in the blend. So let us know like how you resonate with that. If you have heard us say in that way, and if you feel the same way if you're blending, even if it's like plant mom life, because I just got some new plants. They, <laughs> they are struggling. Let me tell you. Oh, my, my, where is it? My plant right here is doing really well because well, I got I, it off I, the shelf at Target. <laughs> uh, I actually, I went overboard and I, I bought maybe like 11 plants and we named like them real in plant. Canto care. Yeah. Real plants. And maybe I should have started with, with one or two. Because now I am there. I think they're dying a slow death. I can't tell. They're either thriving very slowly or dying very slowly. Well, are they turning brown? They or are. are they staying green? Okay, so they're dying slowly. They're- <laughs> but only partially brown. But the brown part means no good. The green part means good. I know that. So uh, I think there's apps out there that will help me. But obviously it was a commitment that I <laughs> Love and but we're gonna give you business advice, so don't worry. Yeah. We, no, I'm just yeah. kidding. Yeah, I have my fake plants behind me. I have one orchid. Orchids stress me out. My mom gave it to me, and I'm just like, oh, they're know. finicky. I, yeah. I know. So I tried the five ice cubes on a Sunday and crossed my fingers. So someone says I'm blending right now. My kids are homesick, so we walked to the post office, drop off orders, and get him fresh air. Okay, I hope he feels better. So the blend. I'm gonna talk about some ideas of the blend. Um, the blend is you know, being on a Zoom call or a live call with hundreds of people and your kid walking in and asking you a question, you know, the blend. It's like imperfect. (laughs) Yeah. The blend is, you know, your kids falling asleep on the floor in your office or coming in, you know, sitting on your lap. That's like some of the work stuff. The blend is, is stopping your meetings at a certain time to go pick your kids up from school get them settled, give them lunch, and then come back and do your work, right? And on the flip side, the blend might be where you are prioritizing yourself and health, right? The blend might be for me every morning, not this morning, but every morning I drop my kids at eight, eight to nine, I walk nine o'clock, I start working, right? So the blend is not the juggle because the balls are on the floor or, or a ball is not currently in the hand. And, um, you know, the balance feels like, again, like you said, it has to be perfect because if it's not, something totally shifts and falls off. Mm -hmm. So then you're imbalanced and it feels like you're doing something wrong when you're not, you know, we, I think there it's hard seasons, you know, when you have kids and and everything like that. Yesterday, actually my kids started school and I took them and I picked them up. That was something that I knew was a non-negotiable to me. So when you're blending, you have to really think about like what your non-negotiables are. And so first day of school was non-negotiable to me. Now today I actually didn't take them. 
Um, I haven't been going for any of my walks, whether at in the morning or at night. So I knew that, okay, I could use that time while my husband, who's now home working full time in low labels in my other business, he can go get the kids and he can go pick up the, them up. And we've, you know, obviously blended that all together. And, um, and I can go take my walk. Uh, I actually didn't do this morning because I was talking to the team, but the other times when, um, I, it will have that time frame. Instead of me taking the kids, I know that my non-negotiable is certain days. I want to be able to pick them up like first day of school, mm -hmm. um, you know, and throughout the year, but not, not every day. I'm okay with missing, you know, for having it not be every day so I can take care of myself too. Yeah. Like I didn't take my kids to school today. Normally both of us take them to school every day together. And today I was like, all right, you guys are going to get ready. Mommy has to straighten her hair and do her face because we're going live at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. And you know, and it's like sometimes with a blend is also that sometimes it looks different than you think. So I just want to read a few people's that they, they yeah. wrote. So Jessica says, I work part-time in a corporate position. I work my business in homes. I work my business and homeschool my special ed kiddo, blend and balance. Yeah. Jenna says the blend today is missing a meeting, pivoting, changing to walking and finding a life. Amazing. Laura says setting up blend is setting up Labor Day sales while listening to my favorite host. And then over here on Instagram, um, Lily J says, I'm also a consultant for direct sales and I take my kids whenever possible to meetings and cooking classes and they love it. I want them to be able to have options later in life. Yeah. I mean, you know what you mean and I did is every Monday we have a day of meetings. Like we're in meetings with the entire team. We're in marketing meetings. Like there's nothing front facing to students or clients, but it's all um, internal. And we're like Mondays, we sit for so long that we decided, why don't we take the first call, which is the big team meeting? Because Mina and I are there really that the team is checking in with us. Um, they're asking questions. We're, we're getting an idea of where everyone's We stands. don't have to be one sitting down and taking notes, for example. We don't have to take notes. The team's there. So we're like, we're going to walk during that call. So at least we're walking because you know when things go awry is when you feel out of balance, out of whack, balls are dropping, when it mm -hmm. doesn't feel comfortably blended. It, sometimes it's going to feel icky. But when you're out of it, then you're like, I hate this. I hate that. I'm going to burn it down. I can't do anything right. You know, all the bad voices start to come in and it starts to feel overwhelming and it feels like nothing's going right instead of thinking, how do I blend this? And I also just want to say, especially for the women out there, okay, I'm not going to speak for anyone else because I am I can only talk about myself. We didn't have a ton of examples growing up. If you're in our, if you're our age, at least like, let's call it like mm -hmm. late thirties, forties and up, we didn't, we had there were a lot of people that had their moms that worked, your mom worked. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but we saw either like, it might be like your mom was gone a lot. Right. And your grandma helped raise you. Mm -hmm. My mom picked being a stay at home mom and didn't work. And so it was like, almost like these extremes a lot of times. And we didn't see that whole juggle of like, get your kids to school, make them lunch, try and be a class parent, but also go to work and have a side business or have a full-time business, try and pick them up at home. I mean, there's so many things that now we try and and do. So it's like, let's try and think of the idea of blending and not juggling because juggling feels also like we could drop something. Yeah. I feel like the reason why I like the blend is because it's imperfect. And I think that that's one, something that we were never taught to do was to be imperfect. We were always mm -hmm. taught it's done this way. This is the right way. This is the wrong way. Um, you know, if you're working from home, you should be able to take care of your kids at the same time. That is just not true. You know, so it feels like it has to be perfect because even when Jacqueline's talking about this walk and talk that we're doing, it's not perfect either. So as we're walking and talking, there's lots of background noises that might be happening. There's traffic that's happening. You know, the internet might be going or the phone reception might be going out. That's not perfect either, but we're just blending in and making it work. And I think that when we're, because we've had so many roles that we have to play as women, as parents, as, you know, anything that when you're like going for a walk and talk, you, you have to think about you know, how can I blend this in? Otherwise, there is nobody humanly possible that can um, do all these things because, you know, my grandma did was there with us, but she had that one role, you know, of loving us, right? She didn't have to think about going to work or she didn't have to think about, you know, all these different things. My mom was a factory worker, so she would go to the factory. And to be honest, she was kind of, you know, she, she really embraced not being an involved mom, you know, besides the disciplinary side, you know, so, you know, they had the one role, whereas now the roles are blended, 
you know, so even with the household of like my husband being husband being at home and both of be, us being first generation, you know, immigrant, uh, he's a first generation, actually, he's an immigrant and I'm first born American. I was born here, um, but even blending that so to show our kids. So I think that you're absolutely right that it's hard to figure it out on our own, but I like the best thing about the blend is that it isn't perfect, that we're teaching them imperfection and moving forward, you know? Mm-hmm. Like done yeah. is better than perfect and you can do it, you know. I want to shout out Cozy Orchid. It says, that's why I'm so proud of my mom. She had a six-figure business and raised two kids on her own. I mean, that your mom is an amazing. an amazing human. And I think we don't realize that until we're, you know, parents of our we own. Have our own kids. Like- <laughs> and yeah, and I think speaking about, let's talk about, you know, the husbands, the gents in the room, the the spouses, the partners, the mm-hmm. other things too, is, is it's 100% true. So we have a blend of our spouses, our husbands, we're both married to men, um, that they are taking on roles that my, <laughs> my sister's husband just flew by himself with their two-year-old to Florida. And I was like, you're going to get so many like, oh my gosh, you're traveling by yourself. Like, oh, how can I help you? Let me give you an Did extra drink. Those on the kids, plane. dad, babysitting. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a little bit of that, like, oh yeah, I like my... <laughs> My best friend's husband once was like, so you want me to babysit the kid? She's like, you're their dad. It's not a <laughs> you to parent situation. Them. I want you to just be the human in the house. So, um, <laughs> but what the blend part also goes to, you and I have the ability to be this way because we also have our spouses, our husbands that are willing to blend what was yeah. typical or single what they parenting, well. I can't even imagine how hard that could, that cheers, would be. Let's just cheers our single parents yeah. out there. I mean, so my mother-in-law was a single parent. So my husband was raised by a single mom, four kids, immigrant, didn't speak English. She made it happen. And he has a pharmacy or a doctorate of pharmacy now. So that's amazing. Um, He is not using it right now because he's working for us. (laughs) He's currently in the basement packing labels. (laughs) Yes. So, but cheers to her because, I mean, I think that, and I'm just thinking like how many obstacles that single women have, I, I, I don't know if I could do it. Like, I mean, I, obviously I know I could do it if I had to, but that probably is by far the most obstacles in my opinion, as well as like, if it's someone who is in a like marginalized, um, uh, community. Yeah. We've got some single mamas over here on Facebook and you are all incredible. And, and also those that were raised by single moms. So, you know, I think, and also single dads, right? Like I want to include everybody. I'm trying to feel very inclusive here, blending it all. But but I do want to say that we are lucky that we have husbands that are also willing to walk or take the kids to school. Like my husband makes all the lunches in the morning, gets them breakfast, actually makes me coffee. And he's like, you would never eat if I didn't cook for you. And I'm lucky, right? I'm lucky that he's willing to blend maybe gender roles, stereotypical roles, and also the fact that you and I are right now the major breadwinners in our families, and then our husbands are willing to do it with us, right, and support us. So I think we all have different situations in our lives, um, but what we want to do is we want to take that imperfection out for everybody and go into- The perfection. And it- the perfection. <laughs> I was reading someone's comment over on Instagram. We want to take the perfection out of it and just realize we're all doing our best, even if you're slowly killing your plants. Um, By the way, Mina. (laughs) Or they're slowly thriving. I really feel like they're going to like just boop, you know, you never know. (laughs) Yeah. My uh, mint leaves in front of my sink slowly thrived and now they're just shriveled up brown things. Oh, really? Those are the hardest things to kill. That and lemongrass, I feel like so. (laughs) I have lemongrass outside. I killed two. Um, someone on here said that she owns two uh, nurseries and has um, fake plants at home. So she's like hashtag blending. <laughs> yep. I do and have some was, fake ones too. There was another um, post that I wanted to just shout out, which as as we were talking about it, I, I have a smoothie every morning, right? And so they said like the blend is just like creating a smoothie, you know, like every day you can add a different, there's a different ingredient added. And when that different ingredient is added, it looks different. So I think that's the thing to think about. Um, the blend of it all, some days are going to be messy. Like you're, the lid might not be on and, and it just might spout out everywhere. Other days you might be like, I made the most perfect smoothie today, you know? And so I just- And I'm going to try to recreate it. <laughs> it's hard. 
<laughs> right? Yeah. So, but you might try and do it. So, yeah. So we really just want you all to, to realize that we're all kind of in this together. We're all blending our lives, our businesses, if we have full-time jobs, whatever our responsibilities are, and it can be imperfect mm -hmm. and that's okay. And so, so we are going to try and remove the language of juggling or balancing in a lot of ways um, because it feels that feels like it's something you can fail at. Blending, it's just a different flavor of smoothie, right? Yeah. Add a new ingredient. Is. Yeah. I mean, for sure. Um, also, I wanted to address something. I, I'm small cup designs. I think it's Marcy. She said, I love your generation. My husband likes me working, but, but does everything. Um, I think she's saying like that must, like in a way, like our generation has it. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what she's saying here. I think I that... Uh -huh. I've heard it like um we our friend Natalie had said it like I think Natalie's about 46 now mm -hmm. so there's like the later 40s early 50s like that it like a it generationally kind of changed for us where mm -hmm. men or spouses were more like even with us versus kind of the way maybe we kind were of but I do have to say that's why I wanted to say something to her about it is that my husband is a first Asian male culturally very traditional um you know the man doesn't do this sort of thing. So on top of like the American culture, as well as the Asian culture, it is, we're really going against the norm. And I do want to say that the reason why we're able to do it is one, I don't control how he does things. So I do feel like when you start to incorporate the blend, you can't have that person act perfectly either. So he for example, if I can't be like, oh, you fed the kids pizza or, oh, you had to order this in, you know, like he does things his way too, because he probably needs the support in it as well. So if I'm working, I can't be like, here's what I want you to do. And here's all the blah, 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 blah. Cause the blend is different in personal life. While I may be able to have my team members be like, okay, here's how I want this broken down. You know, not that necessarily that I want them to be perfect, but my husband doesn't work for me, you know? So him Mine doing does. In, So like- <laughs> You'll let him out of the house until his chores are done. I think it's really hard to feel like you're on the same team because, yeah. you know, like as a husband, if you're on the same sort of team, you know, teamwork makes the dream work sort of vibe in this house, then he, he does what he does, you know? And I can't be like, oh, well, the kids really should have had pizza or shouldn't have had pizza or the kids really needed- this or that or whatever, he has to figure it out on his own too of how he's getting it done. And the end result is the same. So I think that, you know, loosening the control on both ends is what makes the blend work, you know? So um, I, it, and it's not perfect. It's not perfect on either one. That's the whole point is that it, it's blended together and it is imperfect, but that's how you get through like hard seasons. And that's how you get through enjoying easy seasons too, is that you don't hold them to the expectation of perfection. You know, that's like the quickest way to taking out any joy of your life, you know, it's like the expectation of it should have been this way is usually what will be the thief of that, you know? Mm -hmm. Totally. So I hope this resonates with all of you as we kind of explained the blend to all of you um, and, and sort of how we came up with that. So we'll keep chatting about it. We'll keep talking about topics with it. Do you like this? Do you like this idea of the blend and bosses um, just want to hear your feedback on it? So Mina, we are, mm -hmm. we are uh, in it. We have some amazing, incredible holiday getting ready things that happen in right now with our community right now we have over 5,000 people signed up um, for the product bosses guide to getting holiday ready and recession proving your business to thrive who in here is signed up and in our workshops with us and who in here is like never heard of it well, tell me more <laughs> <laughs> so last week we did our very first it's totally free workshops so you can sign up um it is the productboss.com slash holiday if you're not signed up yet but um, last week we did our first workshop series <clears throat> and it was on time and thinking about time in a different way. And tomorrow we have our second free workshop. So if you're not signed up, you can um, still sign up at the productboss.com slash holiday. Um, oh, someone said, oh yeah, Cassandra, best day of my recent life last week going to that. Yes, Cassandra, we're so excited Yay. to have you in multi-stream machine with us. Um, so tell us about the workshop tomorrow. 
So tomorrow is all, this one is a big one. Uh, we we're calling, we, it's called the maker's guide to scaling. So it's important for everybody when we, when Jacqueline and I think about being makers, we think about not just handmade businesses. So even if you're a manufacturer, you're a boutique owner, you know, you're making your life, you're making the, pro, uh, even if you're not physically making the product, it, all of the entire workshop is applicable to any product boss. Honestly, it's applicable to anybody who owns a business. But the reason why this one is especially important is because the mindset is usually where it's needed the most for people who tend to be making their products. So people who are hand making, as well as, you know, as we're talking, I mean, we all feel overwhelmed, you know in days of this current season for sure. And we're in a transition. So I think that for a lot of us tomorrow, jumping into tomorrow's um, workshop is gonna be really great because we're gonna learn how to, last time we learned how to expand time, which was so great. It's like one of my favorite things because time you never get back. And if you learn how to expand time, <clears throat> then you are basically getting the best gift of life um, because you're getting more time. You can always make more money, but you can't make more time. And then this one, the second one is for our, uh, for everybody, but it's um, how to expand profit. Really thinking about now, what are you going to do with that time that you've expanded? Now, how are you going to make it so you can make more profit at the end of the day? And it's really a like baseline about it is makers need to make money, right? And so, you know, in this community, we don't want you just to be busy to be busy. We, you learned that last week of let's not be busy to be busy. If that's your hobby, that's your hobby. But if it's something where you're trying to blend in, you know, income or revenue or the, all the things into your life, you need to strategically think about where you're going to be placing your time and, and, and if it's bringing in the profit that you need to be worth your time, your energy, you know, and, um, and that's really what will keep you going in business. So I'm excited for tomorrow. Scaling is something that is super fun to talk about. Um, so it, in, in a community like this, it's even more fun, you know, cause we, we yeah. start to learn that our thoughts are not, are, are similar to other people's. Yeah. And, you know, tomorrow's workshop has been a game changer for so many people. Um, it was first inspired by our, by our number one podcast episode, which is Scaling Handmade. And we realized that there was handmade businesses really had either a fear of how do I grow this business? How do I not do it with my own two hands? That kind of situation. Well, it has evolved. It has changed. It's just about scaling a product-based business, right? So scaling your business in general, because we get stuck. Like I, I know a lot of people will tell us like, I can't even pay myself. How can I hire someone to help me? Right. Um, or they're like, I, you know, someone said I've been scaling and my customers. I have to do it this way is mm -hmm. another one. Someone was like, my customers aren't happy with me with scaling because they're playing catch up. That's Yolanda, right? So mm -hmm. we want to get you out of, we want you to be able to expand and grow and hit whatever revenue goal you want, which means units sold equals the revenue you want. And we want you to do that in an easier way. We want you to do that in a way that feels good to you, um, that doesn't have you playing catch up or feeling behind the ball or anything like that. So I think tomorrow is going to be an eye opener. You're going to walk away with some amazing tips. So if you're not signed up, head to the productboss.com slash holiday. Now we do have a VIP option. Um, it's called the VIP experience who some people have said, I'm in the VIP experience. Who here is VIP, right? VIP in the chat. Um, the VIP experience is awesome. So we are taking questions only if you're in the VIP experience, meaning you're going to still get all the trainings. You have the community. We do do feedback, but the VIP is where if you have questions about any of the workshops about the challenges, if you sign up for VIP, you actually get access to me and I on Zoom and we go through questions and your question could be in that room as well. And you get um, our holiday blueprint, our holiday, uh, I'm blanking out. Let me tell you, I'm actually looking yeah, at it. Yeah, it's a holiday, here. 2022 holiday blueprint. It has- Holiday success blueprint. Trends. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So in there, like we wrote trends of what's to come in 2022, how to get strategic about Q4, what's working and what's not working right now, how to stand out in a crowded market. So you get the holiday success blueprint. You also get, this is a big one, the done for you bundle. It's the ultimate holiday template bundle, which comes with 10 Canva promotional designs for social and email for the holidays, 10 e plus email subject lines, 15 swipe copy captions, and 10 real and TikTok ideas and so much more. So that's inside of that. And then you get the, the um, questions of Mina and myself, and you also get lifetime access to the replays. So if you're not in the VIP experience, but you've signed up and you're like, I'd like to get into the VIP, you just have to head to the productboss.com slash VIP. So it's the productboss.com slash VIP, and you can upgrade your free ticket um, to come into the experience with us. So Nicole says the bundle is pushing me to get on that newsletter train. Amazing, Nicole. What other takeaways? Yeah. And Laura yeah. says, does this get emailed to you or does it show up in MSM? It, this is completely separate, Laura. So this is a VIP experience that's with the workshops that you're able to ask questions in a small group and it's over Zoom. So it is... We've never offered this VIP option before on top of the other things that Jacqueline said about having the template bundle and the um, the um, the 2022 success holiday blueprint. So with last week, what we realized too, it's only going to be better this week because last week we really answered a lot of questions. So thank you for saying that to Gail Gordon. And we really... Um, we want everybody to walk away with more clarity and um, not feel more overwhelmed. So we're really going to um, answer questions that have to do with the trainings. So that way you can really up level and be more clear and you can walk away with digestible, actionable steps. So a lot of what we answered last week, because it was our first time doing it, was a lot of questions about lots of things. This time, I think it's just going to be way better for clarity, for um, actionable steps that everybody can walk away and, and understand, oh, Oh my gosh, now I know what I'm going to do. Now I understand what Mino is talking about of, you know, um, time batching or blocking or whatever it is, whatever that main takeaway was, I want us to be able to have you take away, take that takeaway and come to the VIP session and ask questions about it so you can actually implement. Um, that's really the whole idea behind the VIP. So we're so excited about that um, tomorrow as well. So make sure if you haven't grabbed it, that is the productboss.com slash VIP. It's our first time I'm doing it and it's been phenomenal. Yeah. So if you're in the VIP and you're loving it, let us know what you're loving about it. Um, no worries, Maureen. Welcome. And then Genesis, Genesis says, just came back from um, having a meeting at her real job. <laughs> so, um, okay. So anyway, so this is amazing. Um, so we want you to come join us. We're going to be doing this next Wednesday. I think right now we're doing it on Wednesdays, Bosses in the Blend, or we're going to be going live for all of you um, like this and hosting our morning show. Um, so today we really just wanted to talk about the blend, get a good understanding of the blend, tell you about all the amazing things that are happening in the workshops. I do want to say that because I've been getting this question a lot, is it too early to start planning for the holidays? And the answer is no. No. Um, so if you've gone shopping, you may have already seen that there's Halloween in all the stores, which is just like, oh my goodness, we haven't even gotten to Labor Day yet. So who knows what month it actually is? We'll never know. So it's never too early and know that the big guys started planning already. Obviously they have Halloween in the stores already. It's not too late for you. We really, really, really though want you to be prepared early so you can be prepared on what am I selling? How am I going to market it? Like, where am I going to sell it? Um, how do I connect deeply with my customers? So what we do in August right now in these workshops is really kind of getting you through some of the key um, uh, time focus and time scaling and focus. Some of the key obstacles that Mina and I have seen, because we've worked with over 50,000 students at this point that we've seen, okay, these are some really big roadblocks or hurdles that people need to figure out and get past to then get to the other side and be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know how many cliches I can use, but I'm going to use a lot of them. And then you all automatically get um, red velvet rope. I'm lifting up the rope. I'm your bouncer at the bar and I'm letting you right in the door um, mm -hmm. to the, uh, the Rocket Holiday Promotions Challenge, which is going to be right after Labor Day and like mid September. And we're going to talk about what your offers are. What am I going to sell this holiday season? When am I going to sell it? Where am I going to sell it? How do I make the sales during the holiday season and beyond this, right? How do I really 
grow this business that I dream of and imagine um, that can make more money than I, you know, thought I could do on my own. And then we're going to build out your holiday promotion. So that's all inside of Rock Your Holiday Promotions Challenge. So when you join in right now and you go to the productblast.com slash holiday, you will get access to all of these things and you're going to be with us till through September. We're going to be supporting you as you get ready. Yeah. You know, all of us, you know, now that we're through 2020, it was a really hard year for, for all of us, but for our community, actually, our community actually really thrived and bonded with each other. So from that, I really think that one thing that I've learned from having gone th through all of that with all of you is that it's not too early to be proactive because the difference of the people that felt the feeling of feeling like you're thriving versus the feeling of just surviving was the people that were that took action proactively and did it in an imperfect way. So, you know, somebody has said, or Melissa says, I feel that really feeling really good that I've started definitely not um, had not at this point last year, right? So feeling like you're being proactive versus reactive, feeling like, ooh, I feel relieved so I can take that relief and kind of parlay that into the things I'm going to sell, you know, which I'll learn during the challenge for what I'm going to sell during the holiday season, what promotions I'm going to have, all of that and feeling proactive and having that set up can make such a difference from feeling like you're thriving or just simply surviving or flailing, you know, and um, we saw that be, be put to the test in 2020. And now we're going to go through another holiday season again from last year, you know, 2021 to this year. And I think that it's just been really exciting to see that our community has only grown. And, um, and a lot of it has to do with the encouragement during that time too. So we'll see that all come into play. And I'm excited to see how everybody lifts each other up because that is kind of like the secret sauce on top of all of it too. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, here's another question for you all. <clears throat> is anyone here worried about the talk of recession, what inflation is doing? Like, I'm curious, like if, if, if that's top of mind, because we definitely brought this into the workshop series as, um, recession proofing your business. Now people are still spending. We see people are spending in our mastermind and in the product Biz accelerator, which is our group coaching program. People have said how they've seen, um, August already is doing so much better than they thought and that it was going in uh, June and July, right? So people are saying absolutely worried about the inflation. So here's one of our tips, and this is why we want you to come join us in this, is um, it's going to take more. It's I know it's exhausting. Being a business owner, for sure, at least in the last few years, has been exhausting. Amina and I have both had our businesses for like 15 years. So we've been, or more, I don't know, we're really getting older now. But <laughs> we've, mm -hmm. we've, we've been business owners and entrepreneurs for a while. And we actually both had our businesses in the 2008 recession. What I've seen, because remember, I've started over a thousand fashion brands, fashion and accessory brands. And so when I did this back in 2008, because I was helping people start up businesses, my business actually boomed versus declined. Why? Because one, small businesses had the ability to be agile. They had the ability to be innovative and think about ways to grow. And they did that faster than the big guys. So if we just think about what happened during the, um, during the pandemic. Remember when like stores completely shut down, the big stores could not figure out Target and those places. They couldn't figure out yet how to get people their their goods. So they kind of had to shut things down, right? And the the smaller businesses were the ones that are like, I'm going to do curbside pickup. We can do porch drop off. They had the ability to be really agile and pivot quicker. The same thing is going to happen during recessions. You're going to see bigger businesses that have tons and tons of um, employees have to lay people off. They're going to start pulling back, cutting back all the things. You, the small business, have this ability to slip in. You have the ability to grow your business where others can't. You will also see certain stores potentially go out of business. I saw this a lot in LA during 2008, like stores that were always there were too stretched. It wasn't that people weren't buying. It was how they were running their business and they were too stretched and they couldn't keep up. What I then saw was small businesses, newer businesses were able to get amazing retail spaces that they would have never had the opportunity to get into because rents were a bit lower. The big guys were out. And they were able to slip in. And that allowed for these small businesses to grow. Uber started then. Airbnb started in the last recession. Some incredible, amazing businesses that are mind-blowing now started back then. So I want you all to know that as long as you 
are agile, you're pivoting, you're looking for ways to connect deeply with your customers, ways to diversify what you're doing. We could talk about that, that it's going to be okay. People still have money to spend. They just, we want them to spend it with you. Okay. And that's Mm -hmm. what we're going to really help with over the next few weeks. And even this season versus 2020, for example, because, you know, that was uncertain times as well. And this is, we're going into uncertain times for a lot of us, right? So for example, when the reason why people are buying right now, when you think about it is because the, the, they're not spending the money on expensive things right now, cars are really expensive right now. Um, house repair as well as, um, big houses, like housing is really expensive. So they have the money, but they're spending it on smaller things, meaning that the holiday season with gift giving and everything like that, they will still spend. Now, um, for all of you, you know, when Jacqueline's talking about continuing to pivot, you have to be open to the change. That's the thing. That's the difference between people that are proactive, that are pivoting open to change versus people that are like, I'm just going to wait to see what happens. And then I'll decide what I'm going to do. And the thing with getting through exhausting times is that it's not about brute force, right? It's about finesse and nuances. So when you're pivoting, it's little right here, little right here, little finesse, nuance. It's not, I'm just going to brute force. I'm going to have this sale. I'm going to have this discount sale. I'm going to, you know, do this and that. And I think that that is a really major thing to to keep in mind. I gave, um, I gave this analogy to our masterminders when we were in a person event. And I was like, the, the beautiful thing about working in a, alongside people is that when your backpack gets really heavy, let's say you have a backpack and there's a brick and another brick, like you need to figure out this, you have the business, you have the kids, you're blending it all, blending it all on your backpack. But if you have somebody alongside you that has similar bricks, they can be like, let me take that brick out of your backpack for you. Let me take that brick. So then you don't have to be like, I'm just going to brute force my way uphill this you know, uphill with this heavy backpack of bricks, I can, you know, have this person next to me that's like, oh, you know what I tried? I actually, you know, wrapped a rope around this brick or whatever it is. You know, you you start to see things that you you have just been doing things a certain way and you know that you have to go into this time of change and it feels like an uphill battle, but you having people alongside you, believe me, it's a game changer, you know? So the, a lot of the times when people are going out of business, you know, even the recession in 2008, it was people that were trying to function in a silo, you know, and they didn't have the community rally around them. They didn't have the person saying, I know it's hard. I feel that it's hard too. What can we do that feels really easy? That's just a simple tweak, but not a big overhaul, you know? And so you'll start to see that even in us helping you make plans for the holidays, we implement all this blend into all of our workshops, into all of our um challenges and and even when we in any of our interactions because it's so it's one of our core values is really done is better than perfect we're blending it together we're making it work we're doing it together and um and so i'm real that's what i'm really excited about is like as we get through these uncertain times i know even you'll see it in the workshops last week's workshop remember Jacqueline we were like okay this is for the recession that we're going to talk about like what they might be worried about but we worded it in a way where you know because we have those same worries that all of you do we are worried about inflation too we're worried about uncertain times but the thing is is that there's only so many things you can control you have to be open to the change and you can only control so many things. So in last week's challenge, you'll see that we talked about grounding yourself in the things that you can control. I can control my breath. I can control my time and energy. I can control the things that, um, how I respond to people, how I plan, but I can't control customers getting mad because they've had a bad day. I can't control, um, you know, my kid missing the bus and I have to, you know, figure it out. There's so many things that I think that all of you could, like one little gem from the workshops will change your life in a lot of ways because you don't have to be perfect and we're not perfect. We're just doing the best that we can. So I think that's one of the things that I want everybody to take away from the this bosses and blend conversation is that be proactive with us. It's not in a 
you must do it this way. You must plan ahead, you know, and this has to be done in July or this has to be done in August. It's not anything like that. It's let's get on the same team and do it together and figure out how we can make it work and be open to the changes that are going to happen. But there's only so much in our control. Yeah. And here's, here's a couple tips. And we talk about this on the podcast as well, but one, I don't want any of you to race to the bottom of pricing. So, so you might see Walmart, um, I saw an ad for Walmart and they were like, like the lowest prices they were, you, I could tell their messaging had shifted for recession mm. conversation and they were like, come for the lowest prices, best quality or something. Because like they're that. Walmart. Correct. <laughs> so I'm going to, I know this is going to like break some people's hearts out there, but Walmart is not your competition. Just, just going to let you let everybody out there that makes a product. Some parts, I feel like, yeah, cause they, like cause they were like, no, cause they were like, <laughs> I mean, Walmart's my competition. No, Walmart will never be your competition. Never was, was never, never will, will be. be because they are a different type of business. They are low prices. They do access. Like they're they, a big box store. Lisa said, hallelujah. So if any of you are trying to compete with Walmart prices, stop it right now. Stop it. They are not your competition. They never will be, never have been, never nothing, nothing. Okay. Never even should if be. You're, even if you're in a small town and Walmart is the place, they're still not your competition. There are still small businesses out there. There are still small boutiques. Um, so it is, Laura says this race to the bottom is killing me. Do, if you are in multi-stream machine with us, we will never, when we teach you about pricing in there, it is not about how do you get the lowest amount of like, how do you, how do you discount so badly that you're just busy and not profitable is (laughs) the opposite of what we're teaching you. We're teaching Um, you. Same with Etsy. So Laura, you know, that's kind of, so a lot of times people come to us from Etsy with that mindset of more is more, more listings, more products, you know, create more, 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 more. And let's see who can be the cheapest for more. No, thank you. I do not want to be part of that competition, you know? So we teach in a different way where we really have you think about your profit, your best sellers, your um, secret sauce, like your unique on your n- unique spin on things and how you're going to really thrive. And that's why there's probably Etsy people that don't, um, There, there's probably Etsy people that we're not the right fit for, but it also is that we might be the right fit for a lot of people that are looking for not doing that. They don't want to be part of that competition either. They don't want to race to the bottom. They don't want to do more, 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 more just to be able to make some sort of sales. So I think that, um, yeah, it's, um, Etsy is, Etsy is well, a hard here's the thing. mindset to combat sometimes. Etsy is a marketplace of makers Mm -hmm. and Etsy was a lot of coaches for Etsy were also makers. Right. So, um, and so a lot of times when people are like looking at Etsy, you know, that joke, your mom, like your mom's a blah, blah, blah. Well, you could literally say it to me because your (laughs) mom, my mom is an Etsy maker, you know? (laughs) Oh, yo mama jokes. Is that what you mean? Yo mama's (laughs) an Etsy maker. It's true. She is. (laughs) I'm like, your mom jokes. <laughs> I don't know. It's trying to, I don't know. I'm not cool, Mina. So, um, like, uh, so you're losing me. <laughs> Cassandra says so is mine. Yeah. Oh my god, we should all wear shirts with like your mom is an Etsy maker. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So, side note, um, when when we coach our students, when we have people in our in the accelerator, our mastermind, and they're like, you know, but so these people on. Etsy, I'll have these things priced at this and you're competing on Etsy. There's no one to tell you that their pricing is correct. You don't know what yeah. their margins are. Oh yeah. That's, that is when people are like, oh, I want, uh, I don't know what my pricing is should be. So I'm just going to go look on Etsy and make it a little bit cheaper. That's like no, going to a it. kindergarten class <laughs> and asking them to invent your, like your, no, I don't know. That like is something. not how you do pricing at all. You know, while yeah. you do have to think about your competition on different marketplaces, they, they probably haven't had the proper training. You don't know what their resources are exactly like what Laura said, put your blinders on, figure it out what it is for your business, because that would just, you know, longevity wise and sustaining your business. A lot of the Etsy owners, um, 
they, it won't be sustainable for them. That's going to be the hard thing of when you're, when you're thinking about, I can do more at lower prices. Imagine how busy you could be so busy. You're so overwhelmed and you burn yourself out. That is not the life we want you to live. And that's what we're talking about tomorrow, I think, in the workshop. But why yeah. I say that is, mm-hmm. just, is just what we want you to do is we want you. And that's why, like, we created Multi-Stream Machine. The doors are opening in September. But um, that's why we created Multi-Stream Machine, right? It's many paths for different types of businesses. But one of the core things we teach in one of the very, very, very first videos is pricing. And pricing to the point that you're in the right margins. And so some of you think, you may not know people, like maybe you're local, they're never going to pay it. But tomorrow and in the course, we teach um, in multi stream Machine, we teach like, how do you get a better cost per goods? Like, how do you scale to get a lower price per unit? What I know this all sounds like, you know, big business language, but we really look at it from a real perspective. We have seen people make more sales by raising their prices to the right margins, because then they were attracting the right customers that were willing to open up their wallets and pay. So going back to um, the pandemic conversation, just to kind of wrap this this part of it, is that here's the things that are going to help you during this this recession um, or um, not pandemic, going back to the recession or a down economy or whatever is to come. We're already in it. That's one thing I just want to tell all of you. It's not we're not waiting for it to happen. They just can't. They don't. Uh, they don't make the actual announcement. But usually, when a recession is announced, you've already been in it for two quarters. Okay, so people have been dealing with their own wallets, their own money. People have money saved. They're spending it. But what Mina was talking about, okay, first and foremost, is don't go through this alone. Go through this in community, with community. If you end up joining Multi-Stream Machine, you're going to have support from a, a do, like a course and program that supports you, as well as that community. If you're in any of our other programs, you don't have to do this alone. If you're not and you're just inside of our free Facebook groups or you show up here, you're not alone. You're getting advice, okay? So don't go through it alone. The second thing is, is that um, we want you guys to be profitable and priced correctly. Why? Because if you do have to offer sales or discounts to move some product to um, have cash injections, then you have room to offer discounts versus somebody over here in the chat said, I've had to lower my prices where I'm making no money. Well, now you're just, you have a hobby. You're basically paying people to take your product, right? So we never want you to be in that spot. And Jen, I think that was you. So if you need help, like let's, let's chat. Um, But that is something that if you're priced correctly, you can ride ride out harder times because there's a buffer there. There's margin. There's money you've saved. There's money you could put away. You could reinvest. There's the money there. The, the other part is diversification. Diversification means, doesn't mean diversification of your product. It doesn't mean that Mina now should start making baby bottles to go with her baby bottle labels, right? It just means that when you know what your best seller is, which we help you in, which we're going to help you in, we've helped in these workshops, um, in the third workshop, we're going to talk about it again in the in Rock Your Holiday Promotions Challenge, or if you've been with us for any amount of time. But it's diversifying where you sell your best sellers and diversifying where you market your best sellers. So what that means is that um, a lot of people were feeling like fair.com was down, like they weren't making a lot of sales wholesale in that way. So if that's the case and all your eggs are in the fair basket or the Etsy basket and it starts to feel like it's not working, your sales start to decline. But if you've diversified and you're on other sales channels or other sales platforms, you can see if you can start to get that engine going. You could start to kind of rev up that sales snowball um, as well as marketing. People are on Instagram like, it's just not working anymore. But then I think I saw Laura say, okay, I'm going to start pushing people joining my email list. Great. You start to get people on your email list and then you get to market and sell to them in their email, right? So I want you to think about these three things as you're going through this time with us is diversification of taking your best seller. And it's also multiple streams of revenue, multiple sales platforms. It's what we teach in multi-stream machine is getting your best sellers in front of more eyes on different sales channels, right? That way there's different opportunities for you to be making sales and to come in. All right. So I hope that makes sense. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are talking about diversification. So don't get confused by how they teach it. The way that we teach it is how you should do it as a small product business. Okay. So it's taking your bestseller to multiple um, platforms as well as multiple uh, marketing channels. 
it's not, and you'll see this, a co- lot of companies fail because of this. Like when we're, they're going into uncertain times, it's not trying to diversify with more products. You're, uh, it's really loud on your chewing the, the ice. My ice is so loud. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so Sorry. instead of, so you'll see companies fail because they think that I'm going to expand out with a really big collection, like how the big businesses do it. But if you're a small business, you don't have the time or the money to waste in being like, I'm going to diversify at the beginning versus later on. So what you're diversifying is you're taking the best seller and you're diversifying how you sell it and how you market it. It's not, oh, I heard Mina and Jacqueline say diversification and this person said diversification. And I see the big guys diversify the very beginning because they have lots of different products and lots of different places. It's not the same thing. We really, really specialize in helping small businesses that are products, physical product businesses. So make sure you don't get confused by, you know, how you're diversifying um, because long-term it does make a difference um, of you getting through it and feeling the relief of it and make sure you go to the workshop so you can get that dialed in with us um, because it's different than um, trying to do all the things everywhere. Yeah. So Carissa says, I'm very excited to join Multishoe Machine. If you head to multistreammachine.com, Carissa, you can get on the wait list um, and we are opening the doors in mid-September for that as well. And we're actually going to have three pricing options. Um, and one of them is going to be um, priced so that those of you who really know that this is the the change in your business that you need, this is that thing that's going to get you over it. It's really going to be something that makes it a great investment that you can pay over time to then also be able to implement and make your money back pretty quickly. So do that. Okay. So I'm seeing a lot of people have signed up for the VIP option. So here's my three different things I'm going to tell you. One, if you're not already in the holiday workshops, um, go ahead and sign up. It's totally free. And you also get passed to rock your holiday promotions challenge. So that's the productboss.com slash holiday, the productboss.com slash holiday. If, and then when you sign up, you'll have the option to join VIP grab that option. That is where we're answering questions. Plus you get the support of content and templates and our holiday success blueprint, and you get lifetime access to all the replays. Okay. So that's that. Now, if you signed up, but you didn't sign up for the VIP option and you're listening, you're like, I want to ask questions. I want to come to the zoom call tomorrow after I want access to all these templates to shortcut my time. Um, then you can go to the productboss.com slash VIP. That's the productboss.com slash VIP and upgrade your free ticket to the VIP experience. All right. So those are your options on the two ways um, in which we're supporting you right now. We can't, we're, I'm seeing tons of people sign up for the VIP right now. So I'm so excited to get your questions answered. And I'm going live on Instagram with Ruth Nathans right now to talk about the workshops and challenge. So we're going to hop off. Mina has a coaching Mm -hmm. call. Which I want to tell a really quick story about um, Nicole. Two minutes. uh, Ruth Nathans. So this is when we are wearing uh, all masks, right? So for example, uh, oh, not for example. I don't know why I said for example. Okay, so I was flying back from a team meeting from Washington, D.C. Nicole is actually a flight attendant. And I went to first class and sat down and she was like, hey, could you put your could you put your um, bag up there? And I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to. It's just um, I'm going to wait till there's a break in the uh, the people coming in so I don't block them off. So I was just waiting, you know. So here's the crazy part. She recognized my voice, came over and asked me if my name was Mina from the product boss. And on then an we took a picture. Yeah, on an airplane from Washington to Iowa. And she told me this story about how she had gotten coffee from uh, one of our um, free coffee uh, things, that the free coffee days. Away. Yeah. So it was really, really cool. I was like, oh my gosh, it's the, she recognized my voice, which there, there ain't no cackle like this one. Probably. There's, and the cool thing about that was, <laughs> it was after the pandemic, so we hadn't left our houses yet. So we had no idea people knew who we were. And then also- Plus I had a mask on. 
And then the other part was just to add this, and we got to jump is that before Mina left the hotel, she was wearing like slides with socks. And she's like, do you think I could just wear these? Her foot was hurting. She's like, you think I could just go to the airport in socks and slides? And we're like, yeah, it's fine. No one's going to recognize Like you're good. Not recognize you. Like you're not going to see anyone. You're getting on an airplane. And then she changed her shoes at the airport, which was good because she actually did get recognized. <laughs> I don't know if she even noticed my shoes, but I was just like, and then Jacqueline, when I box her, Jacqueline and tell her, she's like, this is Mina's worst nightmare, which it wasn't. It was such a lovely thing. And it was like, it'll stay with me forever. So shout yeah. out to um, Nicole and Ruth Nathan. So you hop over there. Thank you everybody so much Thank for um, being on with us. And we will see you next week for Bosses in the Blend. We'll see you tomorrow for the workshops, the productboss.com yes. slash holiday. See you friends.